Hey guys, Coach Kuiper here with another installment of Kuiper's Coaching Concepts. Today we're going to talk about pitching mechanics and the upper half, specifically what's going on with the glove side. I want to start off by saying a couple quick things. Uh, first off, had just a little bit of uh, static in the video that I recorded, so I'm re-recording this intro. Uh, I'll try to go back and clean it up as best that I can, but uh, bear with me here uh, as we're doing this for the um, for the love of the game, uh, not so much to, to become YouTube famous. Why are we talking about it? Well, a lot of times people come to me and tell me their kid or one of the players is, is concerned with their accuracy and their inability to repeat a particular pitch in a particular location. Other times it's to talk about uh, arm health. A lot of times we'll get sore elbows. Uh, the other uh, reason we're talking about this today is to talk about uh, the action on the pitches. So that's triple A. Uh, accuracy, arm health, action on pitches. Uh, there's a few other things that we get out of this as well, but those are some of the three that I want to talk about mostly today. Uh, in doing so, in going through this discussion, so for first and foremost, start off and say, I'm not reinventing any of this stuff. This isn't my content. Uh, this isn't my information. This is me just collecting information that I've found over the years of coaching. So uh, if you have any other thoughts, tips, and suggestions, please post them in the comments. Uh, we'll learn from each other in the community. Um, but with that said, I do get asked a lot about how do I diagnose or what's going on. And so I thought I'd put a little video together to help players and coaches and parents uh, help understand what are some watch outs, uh, what are some symptoms, what are some things that they could see easily to understand if it's a front side issue. Then we're going to talk into a little bit about the cause, like what's actually causing this, not just are they pulling this uh, front arm and front shoulder, but why are they doing it? Then we'll talk about some uh, mechanical adjustments as well as some drills that go with it. So I think the first thing and easiest place to go from here is to talk about, well, what are we talking about? What are some of these things that I should be looking for if I'm having problems with accuracy or elbow pain? And uh, what I want to talk about is that front going on with the glove side. And a lot of times what you'll see, here's a symptom, is you'll see a player pull out that elbow. They'll try to their throwing arm by yanking that elbow uh, and shoulder to the side. Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, if you're son or daughter complains about elbow pain. Uh, this would be one of the things that I would think about is let's take a look at are they leaking out, are they pulling out and dragging that arm through the zone uh, late as opposed to letting it get up in a good, uh, a good arm stroke um, position. Another one uh, related to the, the glove pull is really a head pull. Maybe this person does a good job tucking that glove and keeping it in close to their body, bringing their chest to the glove, but maybe in order to make room for this arm, they're yanking their head out of the way. So they're getting a lot more side to side. Um, when we talk about accuracy issues, it could be as simple as being, being uh, unable to control the pitches. Uh, what I found when I was ever as a player, as a pitcher, when I found uh, one, of the, one of the tells for me is when I could not consistently throw the low and away fastball uh, or glove side fastball, uh, I, that was a reminder to me to check and see, am I starting to peel off a little bit early or am I coming down and tucking in like I wanted to? Uh, and then as, a, as you get older and you start looking at action on pitches, one of the other tells and watch outs for this front side action is, is that ball, is that fastball flattening out? I, you'll, what, you'll see that it's a lot harder to hit a fastball if it's got a, a nice downhill plane as opposed to coming out flat. And what can happen is by pulling off, uh, pulling off early, what'll happen is that ball will flatten out. Uh, fastball and breaking balls, um, but you'll notice on the fastball, it'll come out with, with a slightly different plane. Your release point, you're almost coming around the ball as opposed to coming down and through the ball and then that'll impart a different spin, flatten out that slider, flatten out that breaking ball. So those are some of the watch outs that I would start with in terms of could my player have a front side uh, issue that we should uh, we should watch. I'm not going to get into the absolute uh, uh, mechanics of it. In fact, I'm going to talk more about uh, the drills and other things, but really just to just really talk about it, I would say um, I'm not too particular about what's going on from the elbow to the wrist if you want to elongate it or keep it tucked, but what I really am concerned about is what's going on from shoulder to elbow and keeping that so it's not yanking off. Let's do it from this angle so it's not yanking off to the side as you're trying to get in from this, uh, from this load position and then coming into release. You don't want to yank that 
uh, elbow glove to the side. What you really want to do is come with your chest towards the glove. Now let's talk about what's an actual cause for this. The number one thing that I like to focus on, and it's, it's really kind of difficult um, for a lot of the ages, so I'm going to break it down into what I think uh, will help with the vast majority of the issues, but it may be a little bit too difficult for people to get a feel of and to teach. Um, so we'll also talk about some, some, let's say, fixes of symptoms as opposed to fixing of the root cause. But what I believe, a lot of the, a lot of the people who pull their shoulders off, I believe it has a lot to do with their, their upper and lower half separate, uh, not separation, I'm sorry, upper and lower half connection where they're out of sync. What I see happening a lot of times is, is people are, let's say, rushing out. What that really means is their legs and lower half is getting out so fast that or in a, in a manner that their upper half is behind sequence. And it doesn't allow them to get their ball up to the, the point that they want to before they get from load into release. So what do you have to do? Here, I'll try to give you a, a visual. If I get, say, you know, I'm not gonna, if, if I get to a good foot strike position and I'm getting ready to throw and I want to start moving the ball forward, but my torso starts leaning forward, Right, if I'm starting to get out in front and now this ball is trailing behind, well, if I've got to get this ball from down here to up here, pull off, make some room for it. Okay, so what you'll see a lot of times is it's not even really people pulling off this front side on purpose. It's the body's natural way of trying to create a space to get this ball through and get it from down below to through that release point. So what I would like to focus on a lot in terms of, of drills is the facing load. Um, I call it facing load. Some people feet, feet in concrete, um, stationary feet. When you, a lot of people will, a lot of pitchers, throwers will start in this warm up position and they'll work on their throwing from here. This is probably my single favorite throwing activity outside of throwing a bullpen in flat grounds. And part of the reason for it is you can get so many good or bad repetitions so that you're creating uh, good habits or breaking bad habits. Problem with this drill, especially for the youth ages and for uh, older players is if you don't know what you're supposed to feel, then it feels normal. It feels fine. And it's very subtle but you can also make a ton of throws at this position without imparting a lot of stress on a player's body. I like to think of these as the pitcher's free throws where you could just go to the gym and shoot free throws over and over again and just get a million reps in without putting a lot of strain on your arm. Um, so these facing loads, one of the things I find to be very, very helpful is taking players and just watch them and see what they do. And what you'll notice is a lot of players will just kind of go through the motions and then you might see some, you know, if you look at my head, my, my head will start coming off to the side because just like I showed before, if I'm trying to start my throw, if I'm trying to start my forward throw with the ball down here, in order to make it come through, I've got to make some space. Okay, now the glove pull, the, the, sh the shoulder or the glove pull may not be as pronounced in this particular drill, but I think what can be really helpful is to watch for that head pulling off to the side. So a very simple drill I like to do is uh, not only with these facing loads, but then I'll like to, I like to walk up to the players and I'll put a glove, you know, just stand next to them, stand behind them to the side. I'll put a glove right next to their ear and ask them to throw without pulling their head and hitting their glove, uh, their ear to the glove. Really simple. You could use a, uh, other end of a bat, uh, whatever you, whatever you prefer. That's the number one thing that I always like to focus on. And it may seem exceptionally simple, but it is very difficult to not only get this feeling, but keep this feeling, and then know when you have regressed to go from this pull, uh, to know when you've gone from a good upper lower connection where you're getting the ball out front before pulling down versus starting to leak out and create room. One of the other ways that I, I have found that I think you can help feel whether or not you're starting your throw from back here and needing to clear is the use of um, an Indian club, a, sm a small bat, 
Uh, you could even use a fungo. Uh, if you can use something smaller, uh, that would be ideal so you don't accidentally knock yourself. But the, the notion behind using a, a small bat or an Indian club, which is basically a, you know, a weighted bat, uh, the, the reason for this is if you try to s throw that pitch from down here, you'll whoop through and probably have to clear. But if you get the, but this will give you the sensation of, did I get out and have good arm lag and whip out front? So if you're trying to throw the ball from back here, you're probably going to pull and there's not going to be a lot of whip and snap. But if you can allow that, that throwing arm to make its way through the arm stroke, just another couple clicks through the frame, another couple clicks, click, click, click. And then once you're getting up, starting to accelerate and whip through, you'll start to get that feeling of, like I said, um, that good arm lag that you should be feeling. So. Uh, there's a couple drills that I like from this facing load position. Next in a sequence of drills that I like to do is I like to get players in the side position or foot strike position. Uh, get them out so that their landing, their front foot has landed through what else throws back and forth and then deliver a throw. Now, what you can do is you can have them make that throw and follow through and see if they're pulling off to one side. The other is you can have them um, and rotate and pivot and see if they're pulling off to the side. This one can really uh, emphasize if they are just rotating and if they're pulling straight down, they're going to have no problem standing, uh, staying upright. But if they're pulling off, they're really going to start to fall over and you'll see that happen quite a bit. So I do like that as a diagnostic tool. Here's another couple more uh, that I would say don't really address the solution to the problem, but more so talk about or more so give a player the opportunity to feel what's going on. A lot of times if you can't really help a, an athlete understand what they're actually doing, it's really hard to talk about changing something that they don't even know that they're doing. So one of the ways that I like to do that is we'll take a heavy baseball and we'll put this heavy baseball in the glove and you just let them throw. Now you, I would probably start them off by doing this, this facing load or the side load and this extra weight. Now I'd make sure it's reasonably heavy, probably make it age appropriate. So the littler the kid, uh, the, the lighter the weight, but the older the kid, you can use a couple pound uh, fishing weight or baseball. Then you can start to feel the sensation of what is actually happening with my glove. That one's just more of an awareness razor. Here's another one that uh, I hadn't done until I saw it. Again, uh, trying to utilize all the resources we have, and I saw this one on YouTube, and I kind of like it. Um, I can't remember where I saw it, but uh, definitely have appreciated videos from uh, Dan Blewett, uh, Top Velocity. Um, there's, there's a handful of others. Um, uh, Joe Madden's put out a lot of videos, a lot of content. Um, I think it's important that we all help each other and learn from one another. And if you see some things you like and you can incorporate, great. This is one where what I would suggest is, is uh, take a football, put it in the, the player's uh, glove hand, and ask them to throw a baseball and ask them to tuck that football. This is probably particularly useful for the younger kids and in doing so you're going to have to make sure you get an, uh, a small football probably you know, get them at the dollar store but if you get a small little football most most kids they know that if if they got a football they tuck that ball and then they're going to run right they don't pull that football way behind put the glove out and then put that football way back here no you tuck it in here so if you can have a player just try to play catch and tuck that football and then you could even make it fun if you wanted to make it another drill and you could have have the player run to the other side and I don't know hand off something like that just to keep it interesting the other two drills that I really like that are really basic um, is you can find any wall and you can start them off in a in that feet in that side load and just have someone with maybe their their butt up against the wall do a rock and throw nice and easy at 50% and see if they're yanking and hitting that wall. Maybe you give yourself a couple few inches away from the wall, nice and easy. And then as you progress further, you make it so that they're throwing into a net or a partner uh, throwing against that wall. And you'll notice that these guys who maybe pulled a lot, they don't want to get that elbow banging against the wall or the fence. Uh, and then these are just some of the reasons for 
being concerned with your upper half. These are some watch outs that you can look at. Some of the symptoms that, that occur, uh, you know, like I mentioned, the lack of accuracy, the elbow pain, um, the action on your pitches being a bit flat uh, on a fastball or off speed, and then some drills that I found over the years that, that can help players reinforce it. But if I had to pick a couple, again, some of my absolute favorites are just spending time in this facing load, and you'll be surprised. It's such a hard thing to feel, but if you can get players to really understand when is it that they're starting to move that arm forward, are they coming from down below, or are they coming from up above in a proper in a proper arm path where they can impart action, get that arm into a nice healthy spot, you'll be good. These are some of the drills, tips, techniques, watch out symptoms and causes that I think are important to talk about when it comes to uh, front side pitching mechanics. I hope you found this useful. Um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you, if you did like it. Uh, let me know if there's any suggestions that you'd have for future videos. Uh, talk to you later.